Good morning and welcome. I'm so glad you are joining us for this week's SOFA sermon. And before we get into the scripture reading, I'd like to share a few things with you. We would love to encourage you to spend some time reading the Psalms with us as we go through a, a sermon series on the Psalms. So if you haven't signed up for a Psalm reading plan, we would encourage you there is still time to get signed up and there'll be some more things posted soon about that if you are looking to get started. But today we're gonna be looking at Psalm 9 and so I'm going to start reading that Psalm 9 verse 1 says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. The Lord also be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. And now let's hear from Pastor Joey. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for being a part of this week's Sofa Sermon. Uh, we began a new series last week in the book of Psalms, and I appreciate Ryan uh, reading that scripture for us today. Uh, Ryan is a ministry major from Round Rock, Texas, and is a Howard Payne student, along with several other Howard Payne students. Uh, she works uh, very diligently and faithfully with our youth on Wednesday nights as a small group leader. And we appreciate her so much being a part of that. I hope each week as you tune into these Sofa Sermons that you find it something on Sunday mornings for so many of you who uh, continue to have to be at home because of uh, things going on with the virus. But many of us are getting close to getting those vaccine shots and being able to kind of get back in the game. But until then, uh, we share this with you as something uh, during that kind of traditional time where we're used to getting up and being in worship, uh, something that you can can chew on, be challenged with, make that connection with. Hope it's meaningful to you. If you find it to be so, I would encourage you to share it on your own Facebook page with others and, and that kind of thing and get the word out. Uh, but always remember that uh, I'll preach the full sermon uh, in Common Ground on Sunday mornings, and then we post that for you to watch later. So a few thoughts today. I'm glad to have a chance to kind of chat with you a little bit about what I'm seeing in the Psalms. And today we're looking at Psalm chapter 9. It is what I would describe as a very typical Psalm. It has kind of a flow and rhythm uh, to it that's very typical of many of the Psalms. It's not one we normally think of. You know, Psalm 119 is the longest. It's thought of quite a bit. Uh, you know, the 23rd Psalm and others that have sort of uh, their own fame and notoriety. Psalm chapter 9 is just kind of if you will, sort of a run-of-the-mill psalm. But in it, I think, is some structure and some ideas that uh, can challenge us in our faith uh, to approach God at a deeper level and be deepened in our prayer life and in our worship life. So one of the first things I want you to notice is that the, the psalm begins with four things it says, I will do. I want to mention uh, one of them. I, I will worship the Lord with my whole heart. Now, I don't know about you, but, but for me, there are too many things done in our culture today where people do them, they accomplish the task, they show up, they're consistent, but it's not something that's done with our whole hearts. You know, I, I don't know why it bothers me, maybe because I'm older, maybe just because of uh, other reasons, but there are times when I go through uh, the drive through say at McDonald's, and, you know, a young person is there working and that's good and all of that. But, but for them to take my order almost sounds like it's a struggle. Like, welcome to McDonald's. Glad you're here. What do you want? And that's not exactly indicative of a person who's doing their job with their whole heart. I always like that teenager that when you go through the checkout in Brookshire's or go through a, a, a fast food line like McDonald's, that they pop up there with a smile on their face. Hey, welcome to Brookshire's. Welcome to McDonald's. Thank you. What can I do for you? And, and you walk away from that exchange thinking, man, that, that kid's glad to be there. And uh, they're working hard. And, and I always want to say to young people, I mean, I would always try to say this when I was teaching school, you know, the, the path to success isn't that you're just going to go from where you are to your dream job. It's made up of steps. And some of those steps are working a job that's not your dream job, that not the best situation, not the best pay, but you do it with your whole heart. And so I like it when people are like that. And so when, when, the, when the psalmist says this, it ought to be 
something of an encouragement and an admonishment to us to do the same and to do it consistently. He says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I want to challenge all of us as we are beginning to regather back at the church over this next season that we would come back to church and we would gather with our whole heart into what we're doing. Come to worship, ready to praise with your whole heart. Man, some of us have been missing it so bad. I know it's not going to be hard for you, but I just challenge all of us that, that worship for a, of a God who has done for us what no one else could do, who loved us in a way that no one else could love us by giving His Son on the cross. He is worthy of our praise. And we should come ready to praise with our whole heart. And we know when we, when we hear what the psalmist said, right? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Man, for many of us will never, ever again take the, the opportunity to gather together with God's people for worship for granted. So let's come and do it with our whole heart. Secondly is this. The, he talks about enemies. Did you know that in the New King James Version, if you look at that word, the word enemies appears 84 times and another 20-something times if you just put the word enemy. So over 100 times in the Psalms, the writers of the Psalms are talking about God's response to their enemies. Now, God defeating the, the enemies of, of His people you know, is this common theme in Psalms. And for them, I think what an enemy was was different. An enemy was somebody dressed in a soldier's, right, dressed in armor with a sword coming to cut your head off. That's what an enemy was to David and many others. Enemies for us today uh, can be very different. Depression is an enemy. And I see many, many people in church life uh, and friends and, and relatives who've had to battle with the enemy of depression. Discouragement can be an enemy. Financial problems can be an enemy. Bad working environment where you're not appreciated and you're not valued and it makes it difficult to keep going to work with your whole heart. That can be an enemy. And I think we need to be encouraged because what the psalm says to us, what it makes clear is, is that the God who's in covenant with us loves us so much that He has a plan for dealing with our enemies. God has a plan for dealing with enemies. And lastly, this. I love this theme, and boy, this occurs quite a few times in the Psalms too. And it is that the Lord is a refuge for us in times of trouble. I mean, what is a refuge? You can look at all the synonyms. It's a shelter. It's a sanctuary. It's a hiding place. It is a safe haven. The Lord is a safe place for us to hide. And all of us who've lived long enough to know this, we all know that at different times in our lives, we are going to need a refuge. And the Lord is a refuge for us. And no matter what your status in life, no matter your education, no matter your socioeconomic condition, no matter your culture, no matter what side of town you live on, we all are going to go through something at some point in our lives where we need the Lord to shelter us from the storm. And this psalm reminds us that this is part of what God will do for us at times, that He is a refuge for His people in times of trouble. So in conclusion, I just want to say this. It's still not too late if you haven't done it, if you missed the announcement last week, to go to BiblePlan.org. That's BiblePlan.org. And you can sign up there. They'll just simply send you a daily email. You can read you can choose your own translation. You can choose five psalms a day or just one a day, and you can go and read the psalms. I want us to be reading the psalms together, to be engaging in our hearts through our reading and our devotional life to see what the Lord would say to us through the reading of psalms in this season. So thank you so much. Be encouraged in this season. We know it's, things are beginning to clear up, and uh, we know that we're going to begin to get back together more and more over time. And I hope that you'll be taking these opportunities to reach out to people around you who may be struggling uh, because they're a little more isolated or they have had different things happen to them. And so we need to be praying for and encouraging one another. Thank you so much for being a part of this Sofa Sermon. I hope you have a great week.